What's it like when you haven't just gone to a concert for fun in 10 years? Tune in to find out and don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe on Stitcher, iTunes, wherever you find your podcasts. What's happening today? What are you thinking about when you're walking down the street? Is your head in a cloud? Don't you want to know what's going on? Let's go! Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Checking in with Mary Lynn. Let's check in with Mary Lynn. Let's podcast, guys. This is exciting. I like doing this. I love it. If it sounds like I'm convincing myself, it's because I am. Hashtag podcaster for life. But that's how I am about everything. Sometimes you have to convince yourself to get out of bed in the morning. You know, sometimes you say to yourself, and by you, I mean me, sometimes I say, what is the purpose? What am I doing? Who am I? What does it all mean? What, what, what's, what is my point? I'm a lot better than I used to be. I used to be just 95% debilitating personal attacks. Although I'm fun at a party, you know. Even when I was a wallflower, I was fun somehow, active listening, laughing at other people's jokes, having a weird comment. I would blurt out a weird comment every once in a while. My dad's kind of like that. He'll be really quiet and then he'll just blurt out some weird joke out of nowhere. Um, but that was me 20 years ago. So much better now, so much less awkward. I'll just talk. And now look at me just talking into a microphone out into the void. But yeah, sometimes I think, can I podcast? And then here's what I was getting to is I get a really good review. Like the kind of review that makes you want to keep doing it. The kind of review that's um, sexual, sexually charged. No, that was weird. Um Here's, I got the best review, okay? And I want to say thank you for reviewing the podcast. And please keep submitting your reviews on iTunes or Stitcher. They help us grow the podcast. And I do read them and I care. Here's my favorite one. I talked about it on my Instagram recently. Oh, gosh. If you don't follow me on Instagram, what are you waiting for? It's my whole name, at Maryland Rice Cub, R-A-J-S-K-U-B. I guess if you're listening to this, you can find my last name. Um, but yeah, my Instagram is amazing. Uh, if you like to see my animals first thing in the morning, like I do, or my cat standing on his hind legs inside the refrigerator going through the food items. But I have exciting stuff too. I went to Dancing with the Stars the other day. And I also went to a concert. I went to a John Mayer concert. Mom, not, Mom on the town. What's up? Um, but yeah, follow me on Instagram, rate, subscribe and review all that stuff on iTunes or Stitcher. And, um, here's the review from Fox in a Box. Shout out Fox in a Box. Thank you for this. It's making my day. It's making my month. She says, if I could be Mary Lynn, I mean, I'm assuming it's a she, Fox in a Box. If I could be Mary Lynn for one day, that would be so cool. I know, wouldn't it? It is really cool to be me. Can we trade places? Yes, we can. Let's do it, Fox in a Box. How about just apartments? You got it. Wait, you probably have a house. Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, I've downsized since I'm not on TV regularly and somehow my rate is, has gone down after 20-some years in the business. Cool stuff, showbiz. Uh, man, but you know what? I I like my space now. Happier than ever, guys. Happier than ever. Who needs a 6,000 square foot house? What am I, an asshole? Who needs a tennis court and a saltwater pool and a separate room that's a library? Um, how many bathrooms did that house have? One, two, three, four, five bathrooms and a bread warmer. And a walk-in, a te temperature-controlled 
It's supposed to be for wine, I guess. Do you think I ever warmed bread in there? Yeah, I did a couple times, actually. Did I use that thing for wine? No, this was at the height of 24 when I thought, oh, I'm going to be on TV forever. And I mean, I am, guys. I am, but I'm just not um, Jessica Chastain. Do you know what I'm saying? I do have longevity, and I'm very thankful. And uh, my life is perfect because of its imperfection, guys. My life is perfect because of its imperfection. Listen how wise I am, okay? Um, oh, my gosh, I just got sidetracked. Let me read the whole review. If I could be Maryland for one day, that would be so cool. Can we trade places? How about just apartments? Wait, you probably have a house. Man, I wish I were Maryland. Okay, it's a little, little stalkery now, but I like it. It feels good. So funny, so sexual, such mom. Wow. That's what I'm saying, guys. Let's keep the reviews like that coming. If you have to lie to give me a good review, let's do it because I need it to keep myself going in life. And yes, I will be moving into Fox in a Box's apartment because we're switching places just at her mere suggestion. Um, and also, I'm tired of paying my mortgage one eighth at a time. Um, he, uh, I heard that 24 is coming back. You know what? I'm trying to move on for 10 years. Oh, probably will, though. Watch. Okay, so yes, I recently had a night out on the town, put it on the calendar. Uh, no big deal. Was waiting for it to come in weeks in advance. Because mommy's going to a mommy's going to a John Mayer concert. That's right. And a friend of mine was like, I don't really know his music. And then he listened to it and said that he felt like he was turning gay listening to his music. Look, I didn't say it. Stuff happens, and stuff can happen that can turn you gay. There's a, there's a spectrum of sexuality, and anything could happen. So maybe he wasn't being rude or homophobic. Maybe he was just speaking truth because John Mayer's pretty hot, and he's a pretty amazing musician. My favorite record of his is Continuum. Really, you cannot beat that with a stick. What a weird saying. I hate myself for saying that. Um, best album. You can listen to it over and over again. It's super poppy and hooky and easy listening, but super groovy with a jazz background, you like a jazz uh, ho holding down the fort of the song. Wow, I should be a, a professional reviewer. I have such a way with words. So I'm super excited. I'm a huge fan of his. I'm going to be honest – I don't know all of his records. I have to face facts and stop berating myself. I'm not a cataloger. I I don't um I have to work to remember things and I have to work to digest things, okay? I'm not tearing through TV shows and books and music. There I said it. So when I heard that album, I was like this is the record for me. I've heard some of his other songs, especially the, lately. But before the album Continuum, he had that song that was Your Body is a Wonderland. And I was like, your body, you're making me barf in my mouth, Wonderland. But I remember when he had that song, I mean, it was, still was a really good song. And, and there's a part of me that's like, wow, the fact that he could say, say and sing Your Body is a Wonderland, I got to kind of love him for that because that's, uh, that's some mojo. And that's some vulnerability and that's some Lothario type vibes and some fearlessness of being that um, romantic and sort of sexual as a white dude, as a young white musician, your body is a wonderland. Like he was really delivering that and it's pretty sexy and so I totally appreciate him going there because you know if you are singing about something like that, oh, my God, that you you are fearless and you're kind of a god because you're putting it out there. And I totally appreciate that because then when you put it out there, 
people who listen could be like, oh my God, I just barfed in my mouth because you're singing about like your body's in wonderland. And I'm so embarrassed because it's like so vulnerably tender and sexual. Let's see. We got the afternoon. We got this room for two. One thing I've left to do, discover me discovering you. One mile to every inch of your skin like porcelain, one pair of candy lips, and your bubblegum tongue. Oh my God, I can't. I'm embarrassed even now. Oh boy. And I didn't even really pay attention to the lyric, just the chorus. But it sounds like I'm making fun, but I'm I'm saying I admire his unabashed putting it out there. That's what makes him a goddamn superstar. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I have nothing but ultimate respect for what he does and how he does it and that he's I I've already said it t- two to three times but you've got to put it out there as an artist no matter what it is. And I love him for that. And the the past few years that he's been doing that like touring with the Grateful Dead because he's such a genius musician that he's like, "All right, what's going to keep me excited as an artist? I'm going to go join the Grateful Dead." Like who does that? He's so talented that now he's just like a kid in the candy store, just follows his creative bliss, and he's skilled enough and has enough success on it. So I have like, did, was I am I making fun of that song and saying that it makes me barf on my mouth a little bit? Yeah, I am. But please understand that that I also love him and am in awe of him and completely. Um admire him as a superstar and a talent. And then I guess I was, I, I went, I went way, way off. Hey, hashtag podcast for life. Am I right? I, I veered way off to try to say how many different things he's done and how maybe early on I was like, okay, John Mayer, just cause he was like so cute and so romantic and so unabashed. But then when this album continuum came off, it was this, it came out, there was this sweet, sweet spot of, of, pop groove deep lyrics yet not yet a little bit um specific lyrics but broad themes you know what i mean and like with the uh, jazz undertones okay i've said enough about that you understand i love him and i actually know him ish he was guest hosting The Tonight Show. Oh, look it up. I did a funny clip where I tried to make fun of him to his face and sing a song to him. Um, I was doing bits. But he was really nice, and so we sort of knew each other as an acquaintance. And then um, my friend Aaron is his drummer. And so then um, – and I'm really good friends with his – wife, Laurel. I hope it's okay that I'm using their, I I don't usually talk about like people in my life for real, um, on the podcast, but I just wanted to say just the whole thing of me getting to go to this concert is that I kind of had the hookup through them and I got to see, um, Aaron who also has a podcast is, is an amazing drummer and a hilarious guy. And, Um, has been playing on his tour with them. And so, and then I got to go with Laurel, who's my friend, and they hooked me up to go to this concert. So it was just a magical. And then both of our sons got to go at the last minute. So I was just living my bliss because I was like, here's this guy that I like. Here's my friend who's this brilliant drummer who's playing behind these songs that I love. And I get to see him playing in a stadium and I get to hang out and have lady time with my good friend and totally bond and have this amazing experience. And our kids are there watching the concert. Forget about it. So hashtag thanks Laurel and Aaron for hooking me up to that concert. And, um, being able to get my son to go at the last minute um, was a was a whirlwind and so exciting. And this was his first concert. He's been to stadiums before for sports, and we got to be there for the sound check. And so we were all sitting out in the stadium, where you know, so you get to see the size and the bigness of it, and the sound a little bit during sound check, how it's going to go out into the room. And so that was cool, just seeing the room as it's being set up. 
even that alone would have been enough for me. I got, I got to see a bit of this sound check. I'm good. Amazing experience. But then um, we're hanging out. We, we get to see the band backstage a little bit. We keep a distance. My son's 11, Val. Um, his friend, Finnegan, who's been a bunch of times. And uh, then we get to... The, 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 then it's just before the concert is about to start and we get to follow backstage to where we're going to stay to watch the concert, which is like right in the center of the um, of the forum in Los Angeles where they have the sound engineer set up. And being able to walk out there and go behind these um, barriers, I mean, you're right in the crowd, but you have your own little spot. And seeing my son, it was just one of those he and I didn't talk about it, but I watched him because normally he'd just be, I, I watched him get really quiet and interior and just sort of stop and take it in because once you're out there and all the people are there and the people are cheering, it's this whole other vibe of humanity, you know, and watching people sing along. And I got to watch him watch that. And it was just the best. And then, you know, we were just enjoying and I was standing back there with Laurel. And at one point there's this song that he has where it's called Stop This Train. And It says, I'm going to read the lyrics. Stop this train. I want to get off and go home again. I can't take the speed. It's moving in. I know I can't, but honestly, won't someone stop this train? Don't know, don't know how else to say it. I don't want to see my parents go one generation's length away from fighting life out on my own. Here's my, here's another lyric. This is the one my mom likes, loves. Uh, shout out to mom, Betty. Had a talk with my old man, said, help me understand. He said, turn 68, you'll renegotiate. Don't stop this train. Don't for a minute change the place you're in. Anyway, so he's talking about life and life moving on and time and not wanting to lose his parents. So we're listening to him playing this song. Aaron's on drums. It's beautiful. Our sons are there. She's bringing me there. I'm a special guest. I... It's amazing. Right in front of us in the crowd, because some people are filming or they have their phones up, and but then both of our eyes stop on this guy who's FaceTiming his mom during that song, and he's not far away from us. So from where we can see, oh my God, I'm going to start crying thinking about it. We can see his mom's face and him playing this song for her and she's got her hand in front of her mouth and like she's like overcome with emotion it was so sweet it was uh it was the best so then we got to go to a a lounge you know in um in in during the intermission and there was food and there was just sort of nonstop. hey there's donuts here hey there's an ice cream machine there's a slushy machine, like total special treatment. And that line, I'm, I'm sort of seeing it through my son's eyes. But even for me, I don't really get out of the house much. I know, you know, let's talk about my review. I know how cool I am. I am that cool. But my life, I would say for the past 10 years has been being, if I'm home, I'm home. And if I'm out, I'm going to do stand up and then I'm coming right back home. So I'm not I'm not saying poor me because I do have a social life and my work is social and it's great and I love it and I'm very lucky but at the same time it's still work you know so I get to go out to the comedy club and be around people but then I'm coming right back home so I can get up and be with my son I'm not I don't have a lot of I don't buy tickets to concerts I don't go to concerts I don't pop out and go to dinner I don't drop everything and go to the beach. It's just not my life. So this was a big deal for mommy. And then, and by mommy, I mean myself. Yeah, I just referred to myself in third person and and called myself mommy. So when we were in that lounge area, that was a big deal for me. Adults milling around, out for the night. 
having a cocktail. It was really exciting. And then also my son, Val, who, uh, you know, we listen to Hits 1 on the way to school, and he'll always change the channel when it's Halsey. Halsey. Oh, I, I, I hate her. Oh, I don't like this song. You know, he'll always put the hardcore rap on harder songs. Anytime there's a show of emotion or if it's too poppy or if it's a girl, he's a bit of a brute force. So, but that night they were both looking for famous people and Halsey was there and they're like, we're going to try to get our picture with Halsey. I don't think they did it, but I just loved it that now they're all about it. So it was exciting. Everybody did it, and I'm so... I love getting the inside scoop and the pre-show energy is my favorite. It's kind of subtle because everybody's a total professional. And also we were not, you know, we were guests, but I did get a few moments around his band because there was this room that was like a green room and we were in it. And just the music that they were listening to and seeing them get ready and kind of get into like show mode. I love that because I can relate to that too. I don't know if you heard, but I'm a performer. Do some stand-up comedy. But that energy that you have before you have to jump off into the performance is um, is so cool. I just dig it. And like his backup singers, incredible. The whole band's incredible. And it's just this wall. I mean, whether or not you like John Mayer's music, um, if you're not ready to go there as a mommy, tons of men in the, in the audience. I mean, he's just legit is what I'm saying. The musicianship and the wall of gorgeous sound that's coming at you, you cannot deny. Um, so yeah, I had my mind blown, stayed at the after party, big night out. Uh, my son and I were both out. We all were out until 1 a.m. I mean, I was doing it at the after party. So a friend of a friend told my friend to tell me that I had a nice ass. So that alone is worth the price of admission that I was lucky enough to not pay. And I had the girl who was, you know, sort of the hanger on, really gorgeous girl who was like kind of high and kind of drunk talking to me at the end of the night. I mean, I had the full on experience. She's talking to me about relationships and I wanted to scream at her. You're 22. Stop talking to me. I've lived a life. Okay. Don't try to, don't try to relate to me. Um, here's the thing though. I, uh, I actually relate to like, maybe not 22 year olds. I relate to 29 year olds. I have a lot of friends that I'm realizing are 27 to 30 years old. And that's sort of my jam. I don't know if I've had some arrested development. Um, what is this podcast? Is it, is it weirdly personal or am I just being normally person personal? Did I tell a good story? I'm basically saying, Hey, I went to a concert, you guys. Uh, it's called life, okay? And I'm living it. And I go to after parties with Halsey now. So I don't mean to be in your face with that, but you need to understand that that's the new me. So thank you for listening. Um, oh, I also, this is like total side note. It, it, this probably should have gone in the section where I was saying how I know John Mayer, but I ran into him a couple years ago at the Montreal Comedy Festival, also because he would do the comedy store sometimes in... LA with Dave Chappelle. And when he was at the, um, even when he's at the industry party for Montreal Comedy Festival, do you know what I'm saying? That it's not like we're out in the middle of the street. We're at a place where people are. He still is so famous that there's a security guard nearby and there's just a bubble of you step into it and you get your time to talk to him and then you move on. You can't like normally go up to him because he's such a presence. Um, uh, so hats off to you, John Mayer, for, for knowing how to be a really nice guy and deal with being a superstar on the regular basis. 
But yeah, the Montreal Festival, I I was like, oh man, I'm not going to enter that bubble. And then I did. I sort of waited my turn and he remembered me and I'm glad I did because then now we have that another person in common. So we have a little bit of a connection and I enjoy him. Um, but the reason I brought that up is because I got to see him and Dave Chappelle do one of their, it was in Montreal. Yeah. So they did a pop-up show. So I got to see that in a small room and they were both kind of riffing back and forth, talking to each other. And then Dave Chappelle would do comedy and then John would do some music. But that was pretty cool too, because it was in more of an intimate setting. Um, so I guess that would be the other time that I saw him in concert. So that's the the um, my journey with John Mayer and my friends who were lovely and, um, you know, a bit of a brag, but thank you. Subscribe. I'll be back. Talk to you later. Bye.